So you want to build out the back end for your web app or your mobile app. Now, there are a lot of videos that I've seen on YouTube that deal with building out a back end that you can use as a database, that you can use for storage, as in media storage, photos, videos, or authentication, how your users can log into your application, sign in and log in. Now, in this video, I kind of wanted to do a quick breakdown for those who are building a back end for the first time and are vibe coding and how you can apply a platform like Superbase, for instance, to your app so that you can have the data that gets created in the app you build, have that saved, and also be able to fully take an app to production. So as we get right into this, I have a Superbase pulled up. This is one of my Superbase projects right here for trading Copilot that I've been working on and uh, and we're looking at Superbase. So Superbase is a popular uh, development platform that you can use for database, that you can use for authentication, uh, you can use to connect APIs, functions, uh, and you can use even for a vector, as a vector uh, embeddings, meaning that uh, when you're working with an AI application, typically, Vector uh, vector databases are used for RAG applications is the most popular one where you're able to retrieve knowledge of a specific kind of information that you upload. Um, so Superbase is uh, what we're working with here. And typically when you see these Vibe Code platforms like Lovable, Bolt, um, Rourke, I believe also, a lot of them are integrated with Superbase. I believe Superbase has developed these great relationships and partnerships. That's also, that's allowed it to kind of become the go-to platform when uh, you're building out your back end for vibe code platforms. But you also have other choices, right? You have Firebase, for example, Google Firebase, and some people swear by Firebase that it's easier to set up. Um, Personally, I've used Firebase for a bunch of apps. When I first started, I was mostly actually using Firebase. The only thing about it is that because the Google ecosystem is so extensive, there are so many permissions that you have to either enable or disable in order to uh, actually get the Firebase um, application working correctly. Um, but in some ways, it can be easier. Um, you have Convex. Convex is one uh, where it kind of gives you flexibility in uh in the back end that you're building instant db is another one neon is one right here and these are all different kinds of um platforms that you can use for these uh various areas of your back end so we're going to be talking about Superbase here um Superbase is what i've used most and the first thing you want to do when you're working with it is um you know let's take for example, an application that you may be building in Cursor. So this is uh, something that I was dealing with just yesterday around a uh, mobile application that I'm uh, currently working on that I was testing out Codex, uh, GPT-5 Codex with. And if I wanted to, for example, connect this to Superbase, set up a Superbase project for this, what I would do is within the Superbase platform after I uh, create the project. So in this case, this was a uh, trading copilot um, that I built. Uh, I would go to uh, project settings and within project settings, um, the API keys. So the anon public key and then the service role key. You're going to need both of those. And then along with that um, data API, you're also going to need the project URL. Those three items right there, when you are prompting within cursor. For example, if I asked cursor right now to set me up with a super base project, it would ask for those three items. And all you have to do is paste them in here and you would be able to then connect the project that you have loaded into cursor with your super base uh, project. And then from there, typically what you're going to do next is you're going to create your different tables. So here are the tables that I have created for, uh, this trading application that I mentioned. Um, and so, uh, you know what, let me actually pull up the, the app. So this is the app right here. Um, basically a way for you being it to, uh, kind of have a conversation with your charts as a day trader or swing trader, um, an AI trading coach. So there are different tables that I have created within, um, Superbase. So I have a conversations table, a memories table, this memories table will actually collect information 
from the conversation I have with the um, with the the, the chat um, for it to then remember in the future when it's communicating feedback to me or just conversing with me. Um, we have the messages table, which is all the messages that are going back and forth between me and the AI, the trades that get collected when I insert trades, and then actual um, user settings, like when I log in to the actual application uh, when you first sign up. And so these are uh, tables, and that's where the actual data is being held. You can look at it almost as like, you know, if you're using Excel and you have different columns and you have different rows, but there are multiple tables and it's connected directly to the to the app and this is how when you turn the app on or when you log into the app all of the information that is there so for example all of these images all of the uh, conversation the uh, trading history this is how it's all able to pop up because it is being um, populated from this from these tables here but then you might be asking well how do you go and actually create these tables so you could go and actually do it uh, manually if you chose. Like you can literally, you know, create a, a table here and and create the rows and create the columns. But what's pretty cool about Superbase is that you can use this editor here. It's a SQL editor, and you can actually just prompt the Copilot to give you the SQL code for this table that you want to create here. So if you wanted to, let's say, um, create the conversations, memories, messages, trades, table, all at once, you can have it give you the SQL co code with the rows and the columns that you are looking to have. And then you can literally just paste it here. So if I go and show you, for example, this was for user settings, you pasted the code in here and then it um, it, it gave you the uh, the table that it, um, that it, that it created. Um, and so, it can actually do it programmatically to where all that those tables can get created and not even just the tables it could be you know functions so for example there's a, this edge function here which um you could literally manually go in so if i go into let's say the transcribe function which has to do with the um uh, uh, voice to text feature within the app if i go into the code i could actually remove this and you know switch it out with a with something else or update it with something else but you can also do it programmatically via the sql um, editor same thing with um rls or role level security to keep the app secure uh, if i go to authentication and then um policies these are the different policies i have set uh, right here to kind of keep the app secure and and that helps to determine what users and people can do or not do on the application this can also be done through the sql editor and all you have to do is prompt for the policies that will help keep the app uh, keep the app secure and so that's what's pretty cool about uh, Superbase in that you can um, do a lot of those tasks through that sql uh, sql editor now uh, that's for the the database right you also have storage so with this you know same trading app that we're talking about uh, I showed you the uh, charts that are here, for example, that are popped up, and these are like example trades of snapshots of trades that I've shown. Now within Superbase, if I show you the charts uh, bucket here, you can actually see different screenshots of charts that I have. That um, each time I upload a chart to the application, it gets saved in here. So this bucket. This is the equivalent of, uh, if you're familiar with Amazon Web Service or Microsoft Azure or uh, Google Cloud Storage, you can save different kinds of media. So whether that may be images in this case or, or audio, these are the audio recordings that um, get transcribed into text when I then um, when I communicate with the chat for the for the app. So the, the media can get stored in these buckets, and so you can use. Superbase for that, or you can use, again, one of these larger sort of um, platforms, these cloud platforms. It's nice to kind of have it uh, all in one with the Superbase, but what you have to be mindful of is the fact that it does take up space. So that's just something to sort of be, be careful of. And in the very same way, you can create these buckets using the SQL editor, or you could create them on your own. Um, and that is, uh, that is very helpful. So that's the database that we've spoken about. That's storage, 
that we've spoken about. And then I want to also talk about authentication. So authentication, this is how you log in to the app. So if you go into sign in and providers um, and scroll down, you'll see the different ways that you can authenticate the platform. So, you know, typically you might use email so you can have it so that um, when email is enabled, um, it will send you uh, an email confirmation so that you can log into the app. You can also have it so that you're able to log in via your phone, for example. In that case, you would want to connect to a platform like Twilio or one of these other SMS providers. You'd have to provide the uh, tokens and the uh, credentials in order to connect it to your Twilio or SMS or mobile account. And then you would able to be able to enable login via your phone. And then there's also the OAuth logins, which would be social media, you know, Facebook, Google, you know, for example. Um, and you have Web3 logins um, through your Web3 wallet, like a MetaMask, Discord. So it provides all these different uh, ways of authenticating users so that they're able to log in to the platform. Something to also just kind of be aware of is um, the URL configuration. Once you have um, completed your app and deployed it, you need to uh, create a URL um, that will, um, or the URL for where your app gets deployed. So let's say it gets deployed on uh, Vercel. Um, you're going to need to add that URL with uh, a slash auth slash callback um, and add that to your, as your site URL and as your redirect URL so that um, once you've confirmed your email, it'll then um, log you into the, uh, to the application. You have to just be mindful of, um, of the URL, the URL uh, configuration to make sure that um, it does, in fact, uh, you know, log you in. And then one other area that I want to mention is the emails area here. This is for the different kinds of emails that can get sent, whether that's confirming your emails, whether that's changing your email address or resetting your password. These are ways of um, modifying the emails that uh, get sent. And then these dynamic values here at the bottom, um, confirmation URL, token, which would be like, you know, a reset token, type in uh, the six numbers or take the six numbers that you see in the confirmation and type it into your app to reset your password. Things like that um, can be very helpful for um, being able to log in and, and reset your password and, and those kinds of um, areas. And that was something that actually took me some time to figure out within Superbase um, because it's not very clear. And, uh, and I'll say that that is largely what you need to start with um, authentication, storage, database, and um, and that database, as I mentioned, is uh, would include the the tables. And so it's typically like the tables that you're working with. But then there are, all, are also other areas. I mentioned edge functions, for example, and that could be good for um, just connecting the back end of your application to um, actions that you want your application to do, and it can make it actually happen faster. So complex business logic. It allows um, actions to happen faster is, is, is how I see it, um, and with less complication, fewer complications. Um, but Superbase is actually pretty extensive with what you can do. Like There are a lot of other functions. Um, what it starts you off with is this main production account. You also have branches that you could create. For example, you could create like a preview branch. Um, fortunately, that's only on the pro account. You get one free project to use within Superbase or maybe two free projects. And then um, you have to like you have to upgrade to a pro account uh, at $25 a month. Um, so something to be mindful of with Superbase is that it can continually go up in price, especially if you're using it um, extensively. But if you were to create another branch, then um, you can create a preview branch, for example, which can sort of act as like your development branch while you're testing new features. And then you can merge that new branch with your main branch or merge that uh, preview branch with your main branch when you're ready to actually make an update. So you can use that for testing, but also keep in mind that with the preview branch, you actually start getting charged for it the, the longer that it's, uh, that it's kept on. So it's, it's literally meant to be a preview branch, like something that's temporary. Um, and so that's a kind of a good start to, to Superbase. A lot of the tutorials that I've seen on Superbase online have been highly, highly, highly technical. And um, and when you are, again, combining this kind of sort of back end um, that is a more native platform with uh, with vibe coding and, and prompting 
uh, AI assisted coding. Um, you know, you want it kind of broken down in a way that is um, straightforward and uh, not like too technical. So mm -hmm. I hope this was helpful for that. Um, again, if you're getting started with it, the areas we want to focus on are the table, the table editor, um, which is, will be a part of that database, authentication, storage. You may deal with edge functions um, if you have some like complex business logic. Um, and then you're going to need, as I mentioned, within the project settings, um, the API uh, keys and the uh, project URL. All of that you can enter in to if you're using, let's say, cursor or if you're working with a Lovable that connects directly with Superbase, you may be able to just connect the project to Lovable off the rip and then just prompt into Lovable what you want, ha want to have done. Um, but this should be a great starting point. I um, hope this was helpful for you and um, I will see you guys on the next one.